Testing one, two, three. saying farewell to Cap. I just want you to know, and I think what I want to talk to you about is that if the Senate sends me the housing bill, I'll veto it. Good. And I'll need your help in sustaining that veto, and I want to tell you why I'll, I'll veto it. We're trying, as you know, to reach a deficit reduction agreement in the Hill, and now is not the time to add to the deficit. And the housing bill will do just that. We'll spend almost $7 billion more in 88 than was spent in 87. It's a terrible signal, I think, to send to our people and the financial markets. But the numbers aren't the only problem we have. We've got policy problems. Federal housing should help those who can't help themselves. But under this bill, 20 to 30,000 poor and needy Americans actually would receive less help next year than under the proposals that we have put up. And which would have cost $7 billion less. And the bill diverts enormous amounts of money to those who don't need subsidies, including interest-free loans to middle-income families, and that's wrong. The bill contains some very strange spending, such as the so-called anti-displacement program. Now, this misguided provision would require cities to pay for 10 years of rent subsidies for displaced households, reducing the resources available for true housing programs that would benefit the economy at large and help low-income or elderly families. We can't have it both ways. We can't say we're willing to face the hard choices of deficit reduction and then look the other way at bills like this that bust the budget. So now I'd like to hear your comments on this, Bob. Uh, what do you think? Well, we're the trying to... Uh trying to get a hard vote count. Uh, Bill Armstrong, to his credit, has been the leader in this effort, uh, Bill Graham. They've done an outstanding job. They may be within striking distance of sustaining a veto, but I'd like to ask Bill to comment on the hard vote count. And Later. 
trusted friend. You served for nearly seven years as America's first or finest Secretary of Defense. And in that capacity, your record of achievement is unparalleled. I've even forgiven you for not reinstituting the horse cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> but your service to our country has immeasurably benefited the well-being of our military forces. You've significantly strengthened the nation's capacity to defend our security interests around the world. Your contribution will have a positive and lasting effect on the quality and size of our armed forces for years to come. I'll miss you at the cabinet table, seated there on my left. But you know, I always thought it was strange, since your sound and thoroughly logical advice was always coming from the right. <laughs> <laughs> After 41 years of service to our country, I guess you deserve a break. Cap, I don't plan to say farewell, because I no, you won't be far away, and I tend to continue relying on your counsel. I want to thank you and thank Jane from the bottom of my heart. God bless you and your family. And here's another little memento. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I don't uh, know any way to express the appreciation that we all feel, my family and, and uh, all of our friends here, for your taking the time to do this this afternoon. And, uh, I think that uh, people are beginning to wonder how many farewell tours I'm going to have. <laughs> Sarah Bernhardt, I'm told, had 18 farewell tours, and I'm thinking of working up to that. But uh, yesterday was, uh, was a magnificent uh, day for us, a very moving day, very emotional day, and uh, extraordinarily good of you to come and do all the things you did there. Serving with you uh, over these nearly 20 years has been one of the great uh, privileges of my life, and uh, it's been enormously good fun, as well as um, part of real history, to see the whole agenda of the United States, uh, political agenda, governmental agenda, changed by the things you started in California. And uh, there were so many people in California who told you it couldn't be done and uh, you would never get reelected if you tried any of it, that it always gives me enormous satisfaction to, uh, to hear uh, the hill that the chief played because uh, you, you did it all and it didn't hurt you and uh, it uh, has changed for significantly for the better. Uh, I think our government uh, and uh, our future, and, and uh, that is uh, an achievement that uh, comes to very few people in their lifetime. So it's been a great privilege to work with you while you, uh, while you accomplish this, and I'm enormously grateful. Sir. party here. It's not for anything that's going to come later. So. <laughs> we can be married. <laughs>
Hello. There's a general who didn't fade away. The Red Shaw's from California. I'm sure you remember. Yes. Thank you, Brody. Will Pat. Yes, hi, Will. There she is. You also may recognize Kay Lee. Jose, who has started the song, I think uh, seven or ten secretaries of the night. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of institutional memory. Good. Ms. Lois? Yes. Nancy Hughes. Nancy Hughes has a son on the football team. Nice to meet there is a chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Yes. I think someone has to start this. The children already have. They are. Thank <laughs> you. 
I thought that the baby was not going to have his mother. It was going to go into a long term foster care anyway. Okay, and it so turned yeah, out so they just a with you anyway. I had told them Thanksgiving, and then this came up. So. <laughs> it just turned out fine. They called and said that they had everything checked out and they were going back with money for the first day of the I was just holding my breath. I couldn't uh, keep it any longer no matter what. But I was just fine. Thank you for what you're Mr. Blatt, the Secretary yes. of FEMA. I present the ball of the World Cup. <laughs> no. that before. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And let me say, I, I hope that uh, what you're trying to accomplish can succeed in the World Cup soccer season in 1994. Yes. J'espère que on peut faire la Coupe du Monde en 1994 ici. The United States, they have all the possibilities and all the conditions. Yes. Well, I know the Secretary Verity and his people will be very pleased to show you all the facilities that here in our country that could make this Mr. President, Donna Tuttle, how are you? Nice to see you. I want you to meet Bernard Fricker, who is the president of our American Soccer League here in the United States. We met when we had the team out here about four years ago. He's my president. Well, I, uh, Way back in the history of our football. Oui, yes, yes, I'm going to go down to the story of some football. There was, a, there was a great football coach called Knut Rockney. And uh, he'd have so many men coming out for football every year. He tried to figure out a way to maybe sort them out and keep the best ones without taking too much time. He wanted to have the best in the most short time possible. So he had about a hundred of them. And he put a few there, 50 over here. He had a soccer ball down with his feet. He had a ball of football. He said, now, to sort you out, he says, football is a game that requires courage and so forth. Alors le football est un, est un jeu qui demande beaucoup de courage. Oui. So he said, when I give the signal, I'm going to put the soccer ball out here in the field between you. Je vais donner un signal et je mets le ballon au milieu et puis vous avez. You are to come together and try to kick it. Fifty, fifty. And he said, now it might be necessary to kick a few shins doing this. Et peut-être ce n'est pas nécessaire que vous tapez sur les pieds. Remember, football is a game of courage. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. mais n'oubliez pas que le football est quand même un jeu du courage. And then he looked down, and the soccer ball was gone. Et après il a regardé, il n'y avait plus de ballon. <laughs> and he said, "All right, who took the soccer ball?" <laughs> Alors il a demandé qui a pris le ballon. <laughs> and one of the littlest men out there stepped up. Un des plus petits était là. Said, "Rockney, never mind the ball." When do we start kicking? <laughs> well, we wish you well. We we'll look forward to your success in bringing this one well, to our country. Mr. President, may we also offer you the official FIFA the, pennant? The FIFA. Well, yes. Yes. This is the wall. And also to commemorate uh, today with a special medal. Special the, medal for the visit of the President of FIFA. To the President well, of the United States. Well, thank you very much. Well, I want my appreciation very much. Thank you, my President. Hope we can all be of help to you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this time. They want to get a formal photo, Mr. Yeah. President. Oh. A, a nice group photo. We didn't get that. Oh. Why don't I take these? You want to hang on to the ball? Or? You can hang on to the ball. Okay, right. okay if everybody could just get in just a bit. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. One second here. It's just a souvenir of your visit here. This is a key. Thank you. It's a key. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great honor. Yes. I'm honored. We wish you well. I mean, thank you for taking us. We wish you all your support. 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 We wish you all your support.
Thank you again. Thanks. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, the President uh, is very honored and he especially wants to thank you to have received him not only his capacity as the President of the Football Federation but for the all football family in the world. And this is a memorable moment, it's the historical moment of FIFA, which is the first international. Well, thank you for what you do. Thank you, my President. Thank you. Mr. President, again, thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you. Something. I think those things have never happened before. They've got more bumps than the basketball. Jonathan, Jonathan, Mr. Stop. It should be good and solid. Yeah, see, no giving, yeah. you know. Can you imagine hitting that with your head? Thank you. They do. They do. But it's so very. Hello. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. And I just want to tell you how wonderful I think it is for what you're doing. People all over our country. And I your age, you didn't know as much about it as you do now. And you're going to be instrumental in helping those people and making everyone more conscious of this and what can be done. Mrs. Wilma Campbell. Brandon? Yes. And James Campbell. Hello, President. To see you. Your family. Oh. I think we better get you sort of in here. Mm -hmm. there. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, wait, I've got one more. Okay. Ivan Lippman. Mr. Ivan Lippman. President. I'm a neurologist from Chicago. Oh, Dr. Davis. I went to Northwestern. Well, <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. It's well, quite an honor. We appreciate your help with this. Well, thank you. And Patty Littman. Hello there. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Teresa Ingram. Such an Hello honor to meet you, Mr. Well, President. I'm honored. <laughs> thank you. And Pat Jowell. Hello, Mr. President. Hello. Thank you for seeing us. Well, pleased to see you. Okay. Well, Mr. President, we're going to have everybody come oh. back now. soccer matches in the United, held in the United States. But now just a minute. Incidentally, did you know that once one of the greatest baseball pitchers of all time had epilepsy? And uh, he, he pitched three games of a World Series for the Chicago Cubs. No. Wait a minute, no, it was for the Cardinals against the St. Louis Cardinals against the Yanks and uh, won the World Series. His name was Grover Cleveland Alexander. <laughs> but you know, it's a funny thing here, we're exchanging gifts. Because in here is a jar with this seal engraved on it and in the jar are jelly beans. <laughs> I'll get these out of my hands. Oh, these are you, key rings with the seal on them. Thank you. These are pins. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Fred. If you have one second, sir, I think we're no, not that. I want to show this is a computer printout for his store. He was very anxious. Everyone say. Oh my goodness. picture of you here, I think. Yep, the Pat O'Brien. <laughs> the Gipper and Coat. The Gipper, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Now, we have uh, four of the Notre Dame greatest stars here with us to meet you. And a little later, if you will, autograph that for me. We have one that all of the players have autographed to you. Well, for that case, yes. And if, and this Where is Mrs. Shore. Like Jean, if you would come over here. Jean, go behind. Yes, sir. All right. Jean, if you would want to hold this, you can greet the others. Mr. President, you, you, Mr. Mr. President, if you would go forward a bit more. Yeah, we're going to have you greet everybody else here. Mr. Mr. President, Shore, Mrs. Shore. Mr. President, 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 <laughs> yes, there you are. Adam, this okay. is Mr. Ralph Guglielmi. Yes, Mr. President, nice to see you, sir. Good to see you. Uh, my pleasure. My wife, Linda. Hello there. Mr. Johnny Latner. Thank you for Mr. Thank you for Mr. President. Hello there. You were an All-American at Notre Dame, and I was too. I'd like to present this to you. Yeah, yeah. Was to the rest. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine, who his father played on the 1925 team, he was in the business, and there's not too many of them around. And I, since I was invited, I thought this would be a great idea for you, Mr. President. Pleased to have that. Thank you. Thank you. Angela Ritelli, Mr. President. Oh, nice to see you. Excuse me. Mr. Norley Hoffman. Who played on Rockney last season in 1930. I used to be the sergeant. And Mr. Adrian Zettheim, who was the editor of the book. Nice to meet you. And also a souvenir of this occasion. Well. Thank you very much. Would it be? I wish. Could I? Would you send this for my future brother-in-law? <laughs> Me and uh, the rest of you were younger, so I didn't get to go up when I was a sports announcer to broadcast any of them. Uh, <laughs> some of us played for rock and the rest of them just came along afterwards. Yeah, I was playing as a sports I know. You read your college. I know. Yeah. 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 Well, 
Right. And Absolutely. when that happened, uh, every place, it was a time of mourning. Exactly right. Yeah. The There's nation. There's only one Kipper, too, by the way. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> That's That's true. True. You're more by him. <laughs> This is to you? No, this is to uh, Pete. Oh, to Pete, my future son-in-law. Oh, yeah. it's a very well, conservative. You want to get in with it's a conservative. <laughs> it's a conservative magazine, President. But <laughs> I had a restaurant down in, in, in Chicago. I'm from Chicago, and Frank Leahy was our coach at Notre Dame. And he was down there one day and he said, Rackney hit his gipper, but I have my jipper, and he referred to me. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. President, I have some photographs here that you may want to keep. The new latest. Now, I'd like to ask you a question, sir. Is this a stand in? Uh, it certainly is not you, but it looks uh, when you were doing the picture. No, this isn't me, and I'm wondering. Oh, we had some of we had some private players there from Notre Dame. Oh, Blue Jack right. this morning. Oh. oh, did he? Oh, yeah. oh. And I can't, I can't identify who that is. No. Did they but, shoot a few of the scenes out there? Quite a few of them, or most of them out in California? Most out in California. We at Loyola University had a field. Oh, very much like the old, the old yeah. field there uh, at, at Notre Dame, and uh, we had it there. And, but that was your part, the drop kicker, the place kicker, and, and uh, evidently somebody who they thought looked well, like you. Oh, and not as handsome. A, we, well, we had uh, uh, Rockney play. Well, uh, uh, Mrs. Rockney was our technical advisor. Oh, was yeah. our yeah. Yeah. life story. Oh, and so uh, cool. we came away with filled with stories oh. of the old era and some of the stories that we couldn't use about. <laughs> 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 You know, he might have gone to Michelle Walker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, he did not exactly observe all the training. No. no. <laughs> Friday night, he could be found in a speakeasy oh, and yes. shooting. Oh, actually, yes. well, or making bets. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. And the once when Notre Dame yeah. uh, was going to play at uh, Valparaiso Tech. And that was in the era when those schools, like the agricultural schools and everything, and the service academies, played men that had already played three years of varsity mm -hmm. ball. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the operator would take very tough. So there was a fellow in there shooting off his mouth with the effect that if it wasn't for George Gipp, Notre Dame couldn't even get on the schedule with Valparaiso. Well, honestly, yes. Oh, they didn't know. Mm -hmm. Gipp kind of collected for the money from some friends. <laughs> got $65 together. And finally said, hey, you're saying a lot, kind of shooting off your mouth about Notre Dame and so forth. And he said, I got $65 that says that Notre Dame will win by two touchdowns and Gipp won't make a point. And two times, George Gibb carried the ball to the goal line and fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else took it over. Just a first, no, first, first make a little bit of a These are for these me. Are for you. Oh, hey, thank and, you. you know, I thought, you know, who, who, right, who is by your thumb there? Uh, Jimmy Crowley. No. I got it. <laughs> and you may have these. You, I, I'm oh, sure you got these originally, you know, years and years and years ago when you were making the picture, but... Oh, these are great. Just great. I have to tell you, the reason the whole picture was made, coming straight to Warner Brothers from sports announcing, I had told the story of Gil on some of my broadcasts on the air. Mm -hmm. And I set out, and all over the studio talking and trying to find out the idea of doing the story of Rockney. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I wanted out of it was to play Gip. And one day I picked up Daily Variety and read when Warner Brothers was going to make the story of Rocky. And I went to the producer who was doing my picture and I said, hey, what, what? He says, you talk too much. And I said, what do you mean you talk too much? He said, been all over the studio asking people about things about the script. Well, I said, look, I wasn't interested in selling the story or anything. I just wanted the studio to make it so I could play Gip. And he said, well, you better move fast then, because he said they've already tested a half a dozen actors for the part. Well, I went running up to the right producer, the one who was making it. And uh, he said, well, since it's the greatest football player, I said, wait a minute, you mean you think that I ought to be about six and a half feet and 280 pounds or something? Well, he said he was the greatest. I said, would it interest you to know that Gibb weighed five pounds less than I weigh right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, then I remembered the camera man who told me that 
cameraman had told me that they only knew, and those fellows up in those offices only knew what they saw on film. So I rushed home down in the trunk, came up with my own college football pictures and photographs, took them out and put them on his desk, and it worked. He said, can I keep these for a while? And I said, yes. I hadn't been home 15 minutes, and the phone rang and said, be in the studio at 8 o'clock, and I'm going to do your <laughs> testament for the part of Gil. Oh, <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> God bless him. Pat O'Brien and I had become friends in that limited time, yeah. and Pat went through all the makeup and everything just to assist in the test. Well, take a lot of <laughs> Mr. President, uh, did you ever think you're going to play in the backfield with the greatest athlete America ever I had? Know. Jim Thorpe. Right. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, you, yeah. I have shown that to these gentlemen. I've shown it to sports editors, and they don't know who the, who the man was. And you write off really well. Really weren't there. Well, I knew him. He, was, he had played the minor part of the assistant that's coach a there. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, you and you're there, too. Yeah. Well, this is the scene where Gip has walked out and introduced Gip to the team, the freshman, George Gip, and in such a way as to get him killed, said, this is George Gip, who's kindly consented to carry the ball for the scrubs. And he said, just call any play, any play at all, but all the same to him. Because I'd said, when Rockney told me to go in there, I'd say, well, this was my first day after he told me to get a suit and come out. And I uh, said, I don't know your signals. And he said, oh, that won't matter. And then he made this little speech. Well, now, right in here in the line, these fellows were all from SC and UCLA, all real football mm -hmm. players and picking up some money doing this. And so what I, just on my own, this was when Gip on the plate had brought me in for him, you know. Gip went about 60 yeah. yards for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. I threw the varsity. Uh -huh. That was the time when he handed the ball back to Rock and said, uh, I guess the boys are just tired. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I figured out that I would, oops, when I got the ball, I would start out here to the right and then cut back through the line and then reverse my field and down this, this way. Well, I got this far and I found myself lying on my face. <laughs> I was really tripped up. And uh, said, well, you know, the director, well, can't you stay on your feet? Said, Do it again. So boom, we did it and again. Now, that's twice. And I came back and I was boiling mad because Boys in they weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and old Jim was standing there. And Jim said, uh, looks like one of the boys is having a little fun. And I said, yes, and I'm going to have a little fun. <laughs> and I said, I was so a boiling mad, I didn't go for the whole thing. I ran over him. David got down and said, cut print. <laughs> and old Jim says to me, why, you look like old Jim there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess what a public We need to do a group photo here before everybody departs. OK, great. This is a presentation copy of the book. Shall we have it in the photo? Sure. OK, great. Let's do it. You certainly would love that, I'm sure. Why don't I give you the rest? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's where George is buried. Oh my goodness. Huh. And tomorrow yes. will be 68 years, his anniversary, November 20th. Hmm. I, don't, I don't think people want that. We don't want to fall through that. No. Uh, no, 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 no. Do, do you want me to hold the book? Yeah. 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 Right, this is a presentation copy of the book. This is really Nope, and all of these guys. I'll choose this one. Everybody sign that copy. Could have a picture? Sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm getting We've got enough room if you want to spread out. Can we spread out? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Probably the greatest battle in the history of this. Spread out. Spread out. Don't worry. Yeah, you don't have to buy it anymore. I want to see you. You're right. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. President. 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 Thank you, Mr. President
the other one. Yeah, uh, right, it's over there. Yeah, this one. Trade books. Yeah. Yeah. You keep that one. That's yeah. you. Yeah. That's, That's, signed, you. That's signed by all the players. That's for you. Why don't be cherished? You were an inspiration when I was a freshman at Notre Dame. That's the first thing we did. When I learned that was done, I just thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. They still do it. This is to you, Gene Shore. I can remember, I can't wait to get my green jersey on as a freshman to see how. I didn't even think I had the, the Kipper's cleats. You know, those things. Well, we didn't, our equipment wasn't always first class at it. You know. guys were lucky you didn't have two left shoes. That's what they gave us. Well, we had, I think we had some of your shoes that you wore in the 30s. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. President. Sure. About a year and a half ago, you visited Hudson Hill Settlement House, a daycare school. My wife is a director, and that's... We went, we went before, too, Mr. President. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. And I just want to take this opportunity right. to have you really autograph that photo for me, please. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it, was, it was a great day for us when you came to visit us. We still talk about it. Friend. Friend. Mm -hmm. Friend. Mm -hmm. working. It's yeah. not working. Let me show you guys a pen. Because there's all kinds of different material about us. There's one white pen. Oh, that's great. The white one. I used to broadcast a few games. Yeah, it comes yeah. 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 part. So Wrigley Field now. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your privilege. Oh, now. Oh, it's just a ring. To the ladies. Thank you very much. Oh, and thank you. Well. And these are thank key rings. Oh, my. Thank you very much. Great pleasure. Thank you, Gipper. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Wow, this is great. Isn't Isn't perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Privilege. Wonderful. Good luck Wonderful. to you. Good yeah. health. Good. Be well. Sir, do you plan to see the Army Navy game this year? That's one thing any more presidents wow. can do. Oh. Oh. The security problem. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Mm. I can't get out. I can't even go to church anymore. Because I'm doing 100 years of Army Navy football next year, and I love a picture. We get one of the two of the captains in here to take a picture with. That'd be fine. I'd love that. That would be fine. Can I yes. talk to Mark about it? Yes. Magnificent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat>